So before we get started, or have we started? We've t- oh, we're, we're always starting. Okay. It's finishing. We have a problem. With. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Yeah. All right. Um, I got an idea. You know that um, ever seen that Twilight Zone episode where a guy Probably gives, gives the person a box, or no, it's just a button or some shit, and you push the button and it kills some random person on Earth, and you get like a thousand dollars. Is that a movie? I think they made it into a movie too. Yeah. Okay. Would you push that button, get a thousand dollars, kill some random person on Earth? A thousand. I think in the movie, at least, at least like a million. Well, yeah, but I'm I'm starting low. You know, that I'm would, the guy with the button. I, I would not do it for a thousand dollars. No, that's like right. not even a question. All right, then we up at two. Well, Jordan, you didn't answer. I don't. One. I don't think I'd even do it for a million dollars. Well, I'm gonna okay, to, I'm gonna up it to a million. Are we just talking about some like Indian guy? <laughs> No, what it's random. It's random. Well, I just mean there's like a there's like several billion people in that country. So. Yeah, I know. It's like the like odds the, are it's gonna hit someone, someone in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be your friend. Yeah, but it could be. I mean, each of those people in Asia, each individual one of them has just as likely a chance of getting struck down as your best friend. I think I'd rather it be a friend. <laughs> Damn. I'm trying to lose a couple. <laughs> there's easier ways to do that than to wait for some mythical man to give you a box. To the push. real question is how much money would it take to kill off a friend? <laughs> That is the real question. Stop beating around the bush. Yeah. <laughs> What's the low ball figure on that? Fifty cents? Two dollars? What's it gonna take? I go to back go? to that thousand. I, yeah, yeah, thousand's good. <laughs> thousand's good. I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Jordan, you don't think you'd do it? For no, I don't even think I'd do it for any amount of money. Honestly, what about like three no, billion? Like, no, like no, no. That's the thing though. Like my conscience wouldn't be able to like deal with that. I'd be like. Sure, I have all this money now, but someone in the world died so that I could be rich. They'd probably die anyways, let's be honest here. No, at least it wouldn't be at my hand. Yeah, I was going to say, you would be utterly responsible. And then, like, bad luck Bootsy, it ends up being your mom or something like that. That's totally not Or bad it. luck Bootsy, seeing as though you're one of the people in the world, it's you. <laughs> Damn, no, I think it's one other up. person. <laughs> oh. Oh, otherwise, okay. it doesn't make Actually, sense. I'd be cool with that. Well, it's like the button, <laughs> then, then the guy holding the box is just like, the button always kills the person that pushes it. And then he just, he just gets away with it isn't, every day. Isn't the movie, like, the button kills the last person who pressed the button? Isn't that how it goes in the... I don't know how it goes in the Twilight Zone, but isn't that how the movie goes? I don't know. Like, you push the button, and then the next person who f- pushes the button, like, kills you. What about the first person that pushed the they button? They say it's random. Kill? What's that? The yeah, first who was the person? first guy to push the button? Yeah. Did he just get a million dollars and I'm getting screwed out of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, he pushes the button, you get a million dollars, and then the next guy's like, he's going to kill that guy. He had no idea what he was buying into. Also, why would you want to push that button if you know someone else is going to get How the How often is the button you? being pushed? I don't know. There's probably a lot of people that would push that button. Can What's I this press button it multiple look like? times for multiple millions of dollars? Like, can you just keep pressing it? <laughs> million, 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 yeah. million, 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 million. You're like waiting like, for your phone to ring. <laughs> <laughs> it rings. You're like, all right, all right, yeah, I'm, done, I'm, done, done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I got someone I know. <laughs> it's like you're just watching Facebook, watching the status updates. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's so-and-so is dead. And you're like, ah, dang it. Dang, got, oh, jeez Louise. Here we go. Can we talk about something when someone, you know, from like your school dies and you can't find out how? That is really frustrating. <laughs> like, I Did someone it. die recently? No, not that I can think of, but... Um, it is irritating. Since we all went to the same But it's school. happened several times. It should be illegal to not post the reason. Exactly. Which I, so I, you tend to think it's either suicide or drug overdose if they don't mention it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, something they you say, don't want people to hear. Yeah, they say, like, lost their battle to cancer or whatever it was. Or yeah. Because those are more noble deaths. Like, not yeah. saying, like, you know, drug overdose and... And suicide aren't legitimate causes of death that shouldn't be like you know a pr- like talked about, but it's like you know they're they're kind of like the, almost like the person gave up. Yeah, this episode has a lot of death in it so mm-hmm. far. Speaking of it's, death, it's pretty dark. My grandma died a week ago, or not a week ago, Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about it, but now I don't really know what to say. Yeah, what were you? What, what, you know, I was gonna say you didn't uh, plan anything out. No, I didn't know. What do I? You know, how do I plan? That's weird. Rest in peace. First thing you just talk about. Mike. Rest I in peace. Do, trust me, the mic's picking me up. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, Granny Bunk. I really don't know what to say. It's been really cool. What? Being with family, like actually, like it's, it's been kind of nice because it was mostly like two days of just hanging out with family, and like she kind of died already, like mm-hmm. in our, you know, in our minds. She hadn't physically passed yet, but then. I don't know, when it happened, some people were just, like, waiting for it, and other people were, like, really upset, but it's just, like, I don't know. 
I don't know what to say now. I should have prepared something. Yeah, you probably should have. Really Anyone should. else have dead grandparents? I have three dead grandparents. All of my grandparents are dead. No, sorry. Sorry, Grandma. What about good, what about, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> what about good relationships? Like, I grew sorry. up with this lady. I right? grew up with one of the ones that's dead. One of the ones that's dead? Yeah. Another two. So she's, like, a part of your life to, like, a decent age? Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. that's what's hard is, like, a lot of people, I feel like, their grandparents die, and they're either too young to really, like, understand, mm -hmm. or they just weren't close in the beginning anyway. So, like, yeah, it's sad, and you're there for your family, but you don't necessarily, like, you never had that connection to that real person mm -hmm. you won't like they don't necessarily like really miss the person right. and then you're totally right about how the person dies because if it's a situation where the i wouldn't want to say like wasting away because people can be suffering from an illness mm -hmm. and still live full and fulfilling lives but if someone is in a situation where you do suspect that they could be dying you're almost you're right you almost prepare for it mentally yeah, already absolutely and so when when the time comes that they actually do pass you're you kind of you kind of know. You kind of like, yeah. okay, there it was. I mean, we've even talked about my grandma's lung cancer on the show before. Mm -hmm. And, like, how I was pissed off about, you know, doctors not knowing or checking for it, whatever. It doesn't matter now. But it's so weird because, like, on Wednesday, I went and I talked to her like for, like, 45 minutes to an hour. We had this, like, great conversation. Just talked about it. She talked shit about her sister. It was, like, it was so tight. We just had a good time. We laughed. And, you know, she, like, honestly, like, the last thing she said to me was that she loved me and she was proud of me. Oh. Which, like, I don't think she expected to die, but, like, it was kind of, like, sweet. But, uh, and then the next day, just, like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, it just went spiral downwards. So when I saw, so this whole time, I'm not really emotionally fucked up. Well, the night I found out she had lung cancer, yeah, I went and picked up Joy. We just drove around for, I was, like, really fucked up. Like, I was kind of, like, taken aback. I wasn't, like, upset emotionally, really. Um, I mean, I wasn't, like, like physically like, crying to that point. And I hadn't been through this whole thing, but then, man, seeing her for the first time, just, like, out of it, knowing she's going to die, like, fucked me up. And then the rest of the time, I just, like, really enjoyed the time with my family. I was lucky enough to, like, I guess, get that closure. So, like, I had that really good day with her the day before, and then, you know, word, yo, no, it's... said my goodbyes. I said my goodbyes, I guess. I was at peace with it before she actually... <laughs> that That's good. That, that's, that's very important. Yeah. It's, like, there's... It's tough when someone dies and you didn't get the chance to tell them what you wanted or the last conversation you said wasn't a good one or wasn't a positive one. That can that can make things a lot tougher. You know, it's and everyone deals with it differently. Like you were talking about how when you drove away, you were like, or when you found out she had cancer, you kind of like in shock. Yeah. Like not even like crying or anything. And that's that's kind of the way I was when I heard that my dad died. I was just at work and it's like I just turned to my coworkers and I'm like, well, he's he's dead, and they all they all start. Oh, I'm so sorry, and they're and they're condoling me and helping me, and they're like, you have to go home. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I could just work the rest of the day. I feel like, I feel like I want to work. Exactly. Like, and then they're so like, sorry. no, go home. You can't like be there for your mom at least then, because my mom was flipping out about it. Yeah. But then I didn't go home. What'd you do? I just drove around. What is so cathartic about that? I don't know. I think it's because you're by yourself, unless you. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. like going to like your quiet place to think. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's. A good I mean, point. it is. You just you, you're kind of like losing yourself. You're in control, also. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You're fully in control. Yeah. You're right. You choose where you go. What you do. Or you enjoy well, not you knowing don't. where you're going. Yeah, that, that's a whole different. I never thing. looked at it like that. Maybe that's why I drive around a whole lot. Yeah. Because it is kind of like a feeling of control. Mm -hmm. For sure, man. Yeah. And then you got to get gas, and you're like, yeah. Man, damn it. Everything in life. <laughs> but I want it. <laughs> the one thing. <laughs> I have control. I don't want to buy gas. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I'm buying a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Tesla's the one that gives me free control. This episode sponsored by Tesla. <laughs> I wish. Oh my god, if we got free Teslas, <laughs> yeah, I would say the greatest things. In, I already do say the greatest things in the world about Tesla, but I would, I would never stop. Saying I'm just that. more interested in how much money Tesla would give us to sponsor. Probably I don't care if they gave us a fucking car; that'd be dope. Yeah, that might as well give us free Ready. gas for the next like ten years. Yeah, they're electric cars. Why would they give us gas? <laughs> I'm saying you don't. You no longer have to spend money on gas. So like that's like paying us. I guess so. Yeah, I would. I would still drive my car. <laughs> yes, I would. Just I would probably when I get sell out. the Tesla. That's what I would do. That would actually be very profitable. <laughs> I would Good luck selling Civic for like 
the eight thousand. What the, the new S type? Hell Tesla, no. Tesla, I would never sell your car. <laughs> I would keep it. Forever. Yeah, just kidding. This me is either. Mike. <laughs> this is Mike. I would I would keep that car forever, and I would love it. <laughs> Speaking of, this is Mike. This is Kyle. Oh, and over there, I'm, not saying I'm Jordan. It's Dave the Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't hear anything, that's Dave. Speaking of wow. which, <laughs> Avengers. Oh, pretty bad. More like Age of Doltron. Oh, oh God, I keep damn. Hearing that. That's pretty much accurate. <laughs> I, keep hearing that. I wasn't the first. No. Damn it. I do, do I you really did you honestly think? No. There's no way. <laughs> One, I saw it a week later than everybody <laughs> yeah. else. So, like. Did you see it? I did see it. I saw it uh, last night. Did Wait. you yeah, think like it was okay? What was your best? letter grade? Like a B. Wow. Yeah. I had some problems with it. I liked a lot of the stuff too, though. So like overall, I had fun. Like just what kind of what Jordan said. Like I had fun. Mm -hmm. It did feel long. I felt will agree long with you fun. on that for sure. It just didn't flow as well. But the humor was good to kind of keep the levity and I don't know. Yeah, that's where I stand on it. I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, I thought the humor was kind of weak. Really? To be completely honest. Oh, I thought it was funnier than any. Of I thought it was. Movies. I thought it was spot on. I thought that was one of the redeeming things. Of the it movie. was campy humor. You just didn't get it, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you fucking comic book <laughs> dork. It was a Fuck tribute. Off. It was a tribute, Dave, to humor. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just making that joke. I just knocked the mic, but I'm just making that joke because a lot of people started freaking out about the Jared Letter Joker. Oh. And then it's like, and then the guy that's making the movie or whatever comes out and says, guys, that's not how Joker's really going to look in the movie. It was just, it was just for like the tribute of Joker's 75th anniversary. Like, don't freak out. It's not like what he's going to be in the actual movie. It's just a tribute to it. Like for real though? Well, that's, it's obviously backpedaling for press. Like, because okay. it got badly received and so now he's it trying to so tell people. It got so badly received. And now he's trying to tell people, don't, no, no, it was just a tribute, you guys. And it's like, oh yeah, that makes it okay to like not make well, fun of it because it's just a That tribute. makes it kind of even worse. That's your tribute to the Joker? <laughs> that's yeah. true, that's true. It's like, oh, all those criticisms we had, totally unfounded I didn't think, it's a tribute. I didn't think it looked that bad except for the stupid grill. No, I think. The grill? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even see that. Yeah, he had I silver teeth, now. he had like okay. one purple glove on, he was all tatted up and it was just like, what the fuck are you Dave doing to this character? Tutu just posted a picture on Facebook earlier today of Harley tattooing him. Mm. So I like I feel like that's not just a tribute. Like, I feel like that's a part of the character. No, it totally was. Okay. And it may still be in some part, but they they were they're backpedaling hard on his design. So dumb. Yeah, whoever greenlit that should be shot. It's like I could see that. I'll press the button on that guy. <laughs> Five dollars, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'd pay for Easy that. Five, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I really thought they were gonna go killing Joe Guess because that first picture they released of Jared Leto taking the picture. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Did you see that first photo? No. Oh, you know, Jared Leto had an old camera and he was taking a picture, but it was also him. Mm -hmm. and he was like the Killing Joke cover. Hmm. So I thought like that's the ask, like that's, that's the, and then when I saw this picture. I'm like, what the fuck changed? <laughs> A bunch we of, got off uh, Avengers real quick, by the okay, way. Okay, yeah, back on Avengers. Because <laughs> it sucked ass, probably. <laughs> I gave it a B minus. You give it a C minus. Dave gives a C minus. And That's Jordan is standing good. strong at an A plus plus or A minus. A minus. I mean, it wasn't as spectacular as the first Avengers. Yeah. As spectacular. The only reason I gave it a C minus as is because I got to go to a movie theater yeah. and watch a movie. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, you're yeah. saying like yeah, if you watch this at home, Dave? If I watch it at home, it'd probably be like a D minus. That's that makes sense. I will go with that. I don't know how this will play on a TV screen. Well, I think um, it'll be better. I enjoyed the theater experience. Possibly. What? Uh, I, <laughs> what are you talking about? Just move on <laughs> I wouldn't think it would play better, but this is this this is one of the, my complaints about the movie is it didn't feel it. I didn't have those big money shot cinematic moments that I like in a lot of the Marvel movies. A lot of it felt like where I'm like, I could I, I could sit and watch this well, on Netflix. I mean, they, they, they can't try to That's redo that over again because, you know, you already had those moments in the first Avengers. It was like, well, no, they, boom, they this is them. They're all together now. And boom, boom. Oh, that no, shot no. at the beginning, though, that was tight where it was like the one take. Mm -hmm. And then they're all in that line together. I was That's like, pretty cool. Yeah. That is tight. Like, that was in all the trailers. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, like, uh, towards really the good. end, there was, like, a circular shot where they're all fighting. Oh, that's true, that too. That was a good shot, too. Yeah, like, those are good, like, you want, it's just, like, I mean, I don't want to be, like, I'm not saying I'm a fanboy, but it's just, like, you felt that moment, like, fuck yeah. You see, that's that's what I lacked from the movies. I didn't get that fuck yeah moment. That's really? why it's a B-minus for me is because 
I like it when the Marvel movies give me that like <laughs> intense. Oh, yeah, I'm so though. into this kind of thing. <clears throat> and most of the time in the movie, I was just like, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, this is good. And I, I would. Like, uh, no, nothing ever made that, me pee. I hey, hold on. Shit. I would love Good. to do a video podcast just about the Avengers, and the video is only on Jordan's yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. It's a reaction <laughs> video to art. Uh, who? Well, uh, like, Jordan reacts. One, to one, one of my biggest show. problems, like Ultron, like for some reason, just immediately is like, I have to kill the Avengers and destroy the world. Like, I just didn't get that. Jordan and I were discussing last night. Whose fucking party were they at in the beginning? It was a going away party, but for who? Did anyone know for who? What? The party in the beginning. It was a going away party, but for who? It was a going away party? Yeah. That's what Kyle said. Yeah, they said it twice. Like, they said going away, coming to going away party. Are you sure? Uh, yes, I'm sure. Then whose going away party was it? That's only what I'm fucking say. Okay, I feel what like party it was it to be? Okay, say it's not a it going away party. It was just a party to celebrate that they fucking got the scepter back. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. That's what he said. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. That's yeah, like, because he has the scepter in his thing, and he's like... It was a, he, he even it was a going away party for a uh, fucking... Uh, Thor? Thor. Yeah. See, that's what I thought. That's like the only thing that made sense to me. He was going back to Asgard, but it just wasn't very clear. And then there was no, like... I guess I'm staying here. But not that there needed to be, but it's just like, it was just never clear what that party really was. I think it was a going away party for Thor, by the way. That, that would make sense, because, I mean, like, he it's says something like, back. yeah, time for, what is it, like, drinks or something? Like, when they're when they're all standing around, like, we have victory, right? So now we can we can drink? Okay, so my favorite part <laughs> of that whole movie. Being drunk yeah, that, like, yeah, that was my favorite part of the whole movie. Excelsior! <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember my favorite non -spoiler part. Non-spoiler alert. Dude, my favorite was the hammer being picked up i don't know if we can you know i don't want to like total spoiler what vision picks it up yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah <coughs> that was a good point. one of the weird things i thought was like i just things i thought were strange is like they never named quicksilver or the scarlet witch mm -hmm. they never named vision except ultron goes my vision well and then thor calls him a vision too oh does he okay i must have just missed that part yeah, yeah. Well, I thought they, it was they literally vision. say the word stark's vision, vision. Three times to Oh, okay. Stark's yeah. vision. That's Stark's they, vision, uh, okay. Ultron's vision, and Thor's vision. Like, they, they established that he's vision pretty, gotcha. okay. pretty solidly. Okay. My favorite part, which was... I the whole you. movie, because I loved it. It was great. <laughs> up, I'm going to go see it again tonight. Who wants, who's with me? No. no. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the other reason, B-. minus. No big peak money shot moment for me that got me really, like, oh, amped up. And then it's a movie that does not make me want to go see it again for a while. Every yeah. other mo Marvel movie that I liked, I was li I literally saw it the same weekend. I saw Avengers twice in the same weekend. I saw Iron Man like five times yeah. in, in three days. And then I saw that Winter Soldier movie, twice in the same weekend. Oh, really? But, yeah. And Winter this Soldier one, ruled. no. Oh, it'll be a while before I, I see this one again. I really liked when Vision woke up for the first time. I thought that was a cool scene yeah, because, because everyone, it was like chaos right up until that point and everyone's like fighting each other and they're like, no, you, you know, you can't do this and then people are just beating the shit out of each other and all of a sudden Thor just comes in, boom, and he just wakes up and then I think, what, Thor starts trying to fight him or something? Who no, was, Thor, was, Thor woke him up on purpose. Who he, was trying to fight him at, right when he woke um, up? I think it was Cap like threw a shield or something like that because they were like, we have to kill him. We can't let him oh, live. Okay. Hmm. I don't know, man, there's a lot going on in that movie so it's hard. Yeah. But then my other favorite part, which was really subtle, and me and my little brother laughed at it, was when uh, Hawkeye and his wife were upstairs talking, and you get, like, a view outside of Tony Stark and Cap. Yeah. And then, like, Cap's walking up, and he just, like, puts his hands on his hips in, like, a really, like, hokey kind of corny way. <laughs> like and I just saw it, and I was just like... <laughs> just, like he lives it, just, it just started it's... making me laugh and then I just couldn't stop laughing like I understand that's like a really funny part to you but it's really one of the best moments no not no oh, one, gonna... one of the parts that stands out to oh, me because okay. I laughed okay. so hard at it yeah I'd okay. say one of my favorite parts is when um Black Widow and Hulk are Black talking Widow, at the bar Shut the... oh at the bar okay at the bar <laughs> and I thought you were about to say talk... that fucking house scene because no, no, fuck no, no, that no. scene oh, yeah. they're, they're talking at the bar and she starts saying I know this guy I know this yeah. guy and he's got some anger issues and this and that and she keeps going on and on about this guy and I turn to Jordan and I'm like who the fuck is she talking about <laughs> and then we and then Jordan just started cracking up and he wouldn't stop for like five minutes that's a good you did that for the joke right yeah Okay. actually I didn't think that scene was you made it sound like it's kind of forced no, no, no. It's kind of, I, I it's did kind that of a charming time. scene. Yeah. Um, but man, that scene fucking later after he's shaving or whatever. Yeah. I was I gonna was say so she kind of drops pissed. the bomb on, bomb on him. She's like, "I'm sterile." Yeah. And, and his first reaction is like, "Well, then where are we supposed to go?" It's <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> that's your that is your immediate response to her admitting it something. It was just a such a forced like that was like 
that should have been like several different conversations. <laughs> and it was like all, this, all of those conversations yeah. should have been um, taken out of the movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was a very bad scene. That's so true, you know, because that would totally work without it. Add another flirt scene or just like maybe a little conversation where this is kind of, kind of serious. Yeah, because I like the concept of two much. of the team getting together. Yeah. Because that's an interesting thing. Yeah. But they never really played up. There's never a moment where like, is there a moment? Well, Scarlet Witch got captured by Ultron and... And Hulk is the one that saves her, but there's never really a moment where she's like gonna die and Hulk has to give up her life, or vice versa, kind of thing. Yeah, it's really just kind of like they're just in a relationship, but there's no sort of like I didn't want it to be tragic, but I wanted it to have more weight to it. Yeah, I thought it, it came a long way from when she first met Bruce Banner in the first movie. Yeah, that's true. And it's been a, it's been kind of yeah. It, I, I thought that that, that was kind of like maybe poetic. They came a long <coughs> way from her. Initially being completely terrified of him. Mm-hmm. No, so, she's the one that soothes him. Yeah, she's the one who soothes them. And to now, be fair, they, they planted a lot of seeds for her to be with Hawkeye and with Cap, though, too. Yeah, they really, like, at the very beginning, she's like, oh, they're just friends. Which is like, oh, now because he has a family. Which is clearly only being set up because later he's probably going to lose that family. Or, as Jordan pointed out, leaves the team to stay with the family. Yeah, but that's my way, theory like, that is that family, he's gone just completely that whole now. thing, like... Going to the house besides that wood chopping scene, which was fucking on point. <laughs> <laughs> like, that whole house shit was fucking boring. So mad. Yeah, um, I look at my phone a lot during that. Oh, come on, man. I only looked at my phone <laughs> one oh, yeah, point. Jordan, Jordan's funny part. Too. One point I looked at my phone, and that was when the vision first was born. Because I was like, I've been here like 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. There's no way they have enough time to fully develop. I'm like, oh, wait, we still oh, got yeah. an hour. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, okay, they got plenty of time. Then. Also, that fucking like last battle scene had to be at least 30 minutes, right? Yeah, they spent a lot of time evacuating the city. But I had no problems with that scene. I loved it. Like, I was in it. And then I was like, oh, my God, so much time has probably gone by. Like, it's almost over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I was all about that final scene. Mm-hmm. I think I what I think what it. Joss Whedon did is he actually timed it out at how long it would take to lift five thousand metric tons of rock into the sky, and said, "We'll make it that long." <laughs> how long does it take to get that much rock a kilometer into the air? Make it that long. Agree, it has to be accurate. Now I'm ragging on the movie a lot, which is something I kind of want to talk about. I always find the negative in things anymore. Yeah, yeah. me too. Like when yeah. I left Best in the Furious <laughs> Seven, <laughs> that was a movie experience I genuinely enjoyed. Same with Avengers too. There, I genuinely had good times there. But all I talk about is the things that piss me off. You see, like yeah. I think I'm like that. Like I find the negativity in a lot of things. But when it comes to movies, it's like I'm escaping this world. So I like I enjoy yeah. almost everything that I watch, as long as it's not horror. I'm kind of with you on that. It's not horror in, in, in many too aspects, real. but not like I enjoy yeah. movies too. Like. When I was doing stuff for the blog, Devin and I's blog, which is now officially I'm out of. I saw that. I saw the name change. Yeah. The na- we talked about that for a while. But I got to the point where it's like, what the fuck? I don't have I don't anything care. to say because I enjoy shit. Yeah. Like, I just, I am not a good critic because I don't like tearing things apart. I enjoy mm-hmm. things too much. I'm like, I don't like it. I think That's I, why I haven't posted anything. No, I, I think the entertainment industry or... needs more people like that who just stop tearing into things just for the, sh- the sheer fact of entertainment of people being like, yeah, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Some of it's good, though. Like, I agree, though. But they're made... They're made to say something different. They're made to sell papers or get hits. That kind yeah, of thing. And the, and the other side of the view is you don't, like, if someone's just constantly complimenting things, then they're a fucking paid off. It's like you're either no. you're either an asshole or you're paid off. There's no middle ground anymore. Well, they're like Peter Travers, who works for Rolling Stone. Well, the motherfucker loves everything. Mm-hmm. He's always got a blurb on the, on the newest and And I bet so many people say it's because, like, you know whatever band's publisher took him in a plane ride and put him in a nice hotel. Oh, no, he's a movie critic. Whatever. But, yeah. No, I agree. Like, put him in a nice hotel when he was writing the article or gave him a really nice interview. And so it's like, oh, wow, I'm getting the opportunity to interview this big person. And it's like, I even got to hang out with him a little behind stage. I'm going to talk about how great everything is. It's funny that you say that because in Roger Ebert's book, Life Itself, this podcast is sponsored by... Roger Ebert? (laughs) (laughs) Aw. Death again. Um, Yeah, exactly. (coughs) Uh... He talks about that, like that era of when he first became like a critic throughout like basically throughout the 70s, like studios would just put like each big city would have a rep for the studio and they would take the critic out or they'd fly him to set. They'd grant them all these interviews. And it was for that that positive spin in your paper. When papers meant something. Mm -hmm. When papers meant something. I don't read movie reviews ever. I don't read things on paper. I don't before I see a movie. I, I guess I do after. I'm like, this person's a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Why is Kung Pao only 22%? Yeah. <laughs> is it 22? No, it's something lower. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I, 
I feel like it should be higher though. I've read a lot of reviews of It Follows, and all of them pretty much have pissed me off. Really? Yeah. Are they negative or? I mean, most of them are like, yeah, I enjoyed it, but uh, you know, this is bullshit and this is bullshit. I'm just like, you don't know what you're. You fucking should watch the about. Red Letter Media review because he brings up some really cool. I haven't seen the movie, I should say, uh, but he I'm brings sorry. up some really cool things where he's like. I love the scene where she's like, they're all sitting in a circle talking about it. He's like, it takes you back to like, you know, like casual childhood stories and yeah. it's like spooky shit. And he's like, there's a scene where she's like picking grass blades and kind of laying them down on her leg as they're talking. That's and he goes, and like this person right. knew what they were doing. That movie was fucking fantastic. It really was. It felt so fresh. I, I feel like I want to make a parody of it called It Comes. It's <laughs> good. Mm-hmm. That's really what it should have been. But, but that's like the, that's the tagline. It's like some guy starts asking him. He's like, wait, does oral count? He's like, dude, rule of thumb. If you come, it comes. <laughs> and then the title shows up. And it, and it like splats on the screen. <laughs> Whoa, chill the fuck out, dude. That's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I liked it. Mm -hmm. oh, I you should pitch that to a porn No, and studio. see, that's the thing, is it's like someone ends up having sex with a rabbit, and then they walk through a field, and there's just what? all these dead wait, rabbits. Wait, what? Wait. Oh. Because all the rabbits are having sex with each other, too. So it's like they just walk into a field, there's just hundreds of dead rabbits, so they're like, some motherfucker fucked a rabbit <laughs> before he... Like you, before like it really came. thought about this. Well, it's like, I'm just thinking of these jokes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you should pitch that to a movie. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be best as and just then a parody trailer. Talk to you because that sounds like a pretty cool opportunity. Just just a five minute parody trailer, trailer with all the jokes in it, and that's it. I think that's what it would be best as. I want to see it follows again. I'm pretty sure it's probably gone by now. I, I got to see it at some point. That sounds I think like it's a sequel. Netflix. It follows again. It follows, it follows dot dot dot. I feel like yeah. it followed. I think they might do a sequel. By the way. Yeah, and it's called and, It Stops. And probably the filmmaker won't be involved. I think be, like, he is going to be involved. Yeah, the ghost. Really? Well, he said, he said. The ghost uh, just gets, gets tired and just like, uh, whatever. I don't know. I read some article. He said, like, yeah, I'd be down with it. I got some ideas, but I want to do other shit first. So maybe they'll gotcha. do it without him, but. I just hate I wanna, when that happens. I want to see his first movie. Do you really, though? Yeah. It didn't seem like it'd be up your alley at all. It's not, but that's why I want to see it. I want to be like, that's what's true. the deal? Was that with just this? a really shitty fucking trailer? But like, I, that's yeah, what I it could have been. I'm so, dude, I'm so tired of seeing that, man. I'm watching all these trailers. I just, again, I was talking to Jordan last. I don't know why it's not, that's not important for this conversation. Why but don't you talk to us? Yeah. Man. All he you called me talk last to Jordan. Night, so I talked to him for a while. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I really see all these trailers and like a lot of times they show too much or whatever, or they're just cut so fucking basic. But I feel like that hurts my feelings towards the movie because I might go see it otherwise, right? And I might enjoy it, but it's like <laughs> Southpaw is an example I noticed last night. That trailer is it looks so, so yeah, fucking it looks really bad. But I'm sure it'll be average, pretty good. But exactly, but it might be a yeah. damn good movie. Or like Jurassic World but, is a terrible trailer for me. But the average moviegoer likes Loves trailers that like that. I agree. And then and then like okay, for example, Spring Breakers, mm. shitty fucking trailer. Oh, I don't remember even that trailer. It was. It looked like a shitty spring break movie. Like it looked. Oh okay. Oh so, yeah. It was so they, for the masses. Yeah. Right. So they tricked when I went on opening everyone. night. I was like, "What are you guys doing here for a Harmony yeah, Korine movie?" Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but I will say, I saw, the, I saw the Terminator Genesis commercial. Last drive night. had a lawsuit or, because one of the ladies that went to see it thought it was going to be Fast and Furious. That's Kyle, the most ridiculous. We got story. a visitor. Oh hi there. The police are here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. No. It's a podcast. Oh no. What were we talking about? Something to do with movies. Anyway, Terminator <laughs> Genesis. Yeah. I thought every trailer has kind of like been okay until the one that showed before Avengers. And I was like, I want to see this fucking movie. Wait, what movie? That they finally cut a good trailer for Terminator Genesis. Oh, oh yeah, I thought it was John still Connor a bad trailer. Yeah. Stuff? I was sold. I was like, that looks kind of fucking cool. Like, I'm into it. You still not into it? I thought I'm it with Jordan. Bad. It's like this, this it's like I'm gonna go see it. Because I like going to see movies, but that's pretty much my reason yeah, for going for to see any anything. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like I'm gonna do what I do when I walk out of every fucking movie and just talk about the things I didn't like, anyways. For sure, you gotta change that, man. Yeah, you guys are really there's, fun there's to go see. One movies. thing, I, I I seriously sat down when I realized how negative I've been recently. I seriously sat down and I'm like, what have I not like just talked about everything I hate recently? Like, what have I seen in like the last fucking five years? Where I left it and, and just only wanted to talk about the positive things. Iron Man, probably. House of Cards. Fair enough. Yeah. You, have, you haven't said one negative thing about that <coughs> show. That's right. I have a hard time doing that. Because there, there's so many things about it that I like, that I like to talk about the things that I like in it, that I feel like are like, oh my gosh, I love that this happened and they did this, that I can't. 
talk about the things that I hate because I like the other things so much more. You know what? Even with Fast and the Furious, when we went to go see it. Wait, can I, I say something? Wait, no, stop. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Just cut everybody off. I will bring you right back. I'm so right. sorry. He already forgot. No, he didn't. What was what? Fast and Furious. What happened? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Here's what I have noticed about you because there have been examples of positive things, mm-hmm. I feel. I just can't think of what they are, okay? Yeah, me neither. Pacific Rim. Yeah. Okay, but listen. It is about how much you go in knowing what you're ex- what you want to expect or what your expectations are because dude it's no it's every fucking time house of cards you had no fucking idea what you were getting into you had nothing and you just started watching the show because you enjoyed daredevil and you saw that netflix recommended you house of cards as a netflix original series you had nothing going in besides you like kevin spacey mm-hmm. so you didn't have those expe- you didn't have any expectations going in Kyle here's my counter to that every fucking movie I go to see that anyone goes to see they're going to have expectations of it because they're going to go see it no I know but dude you, you don't let you don't walk in with a blindfold it. and tell the person to lead you into a theater you look at the title you know what it's about vaguely yeah. at the very least in a very very rare exception would it be if you go into a theater with no expectation but here's my thing it's like what Jordan says Jordan goes for escapism and he enjoys it no matter what his expectations are like right like generally you can let those set aside that's I can do that too you cannot you're not that guy give me an example of where my expectations ruined the movie for me do you mention Pacific Rim where my expectations yeah. made me it like the and movie. exceeded those expectations with, if I recall. <laughs> I had low expectations for that movie going in because of the last couple things I had seen for it. Where Wait, I had for what for a movie for Pacific Rim. Oh, okay. I remember talking to you about how I was like, "Oh my god, dude, this movie is either going to be great, but I just saw this recent thing that makes me think it's going to be fucking terrible." Oh. And it was the scene where Ron Perlman is talking to Charlie, and he goes, "You want a monster brain? How do you expect me to get a monster brain?" And Charlie goes, "I don't know. You're supposed to get a monster brain." <laughs> And it's like, and it's the, like the, it's the worst fucking scene ever. And it's, and they each You're, say their lines so badly and it's all done so badly that I'm like, oh my God, this is Like, what bad. am I getting myself what into? What am I getting myself into? Like, but then you were impressed that it flowed better than that in the movie, right? Well, even in the movie, that felt awkward. And a yeah, lot of the okay. acting in the movie was off and bad. And, but it's like, I, I, end, I ended up just enjoying myself overall, but I, I don't think my expectations painted my view of that as much. If there... And, and then other things, too, where it's like I go in expecting to hate it, and then I end up walking out going, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Or I go yeah. in expecting to love it, and I'm like, wow, what a fucking disappointment. But that's, but that's what I'm saying. Well, well, what I'm saying is that these expectations can go any way. Like, you, you, you get Pacific Rim is like, oh, yeah, you had high expectations, and then it exceeded them. Well, it's like, what about a movie where I had high expectations, and then it didn't meet them, and so I didn't like it as much? That's like, that's what we're talking about, I thought. I thought that's like every circumstance you, where... But I'm saying <coughs> my expectations of the movie were the same for Pacific Rim and, and something... That, sorry. That's my question. Yeah. Wait, Mike. I had high you, expectations for two different movies, but yet I had, at, after seeing those two movies, I walked out of them having different opinions of them. Yeah. How is that my expectations painting the view of the movie then if I'm having the same exact expectations no. into two different movies and then walking out with Be- two different Because Specific Rim rings. was way better specific than Avengers. Rim. Yeah, Specific Rim <laughs> was way better than Avengers 2. So then let's Ultra. say that my expectations were taken out of it and I ended up just saying, oh yeah, I liked Pacific Rim more than Avengers 2. Th- how does that make sense that my expectations painted my view at that point? I really liked Particular Rim. <laughs> particular rim yeah particular rim it's very particular I just it's just something I've noticed man when you're really excited about something it's easier to pick apart because it didn't meet your expectations you know what I mean like it's no. easier to pick apart it's like I wish it would have done what this I, but then Pacific like, Rim that the example you, with... you brought up is the exact opposite of that where I had high expectations of a movie going in and it's like then you're like oh and then it exceeded them it's yeah. like yeah why didn't I nitpick it apart like I did Avengers 2 because Wait. it, because it, it exceeded it made you happier like I don't know what you're saying like what what I'm saying is that you say my expectations paint my final opinion. Jordan and I are going to have our own podcast over here. So, uh, do. What I'm saying is that movie I just wanted to talk to you about your opinion. sex life. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm Terrible. Yes. All right. <laughs> I agree with that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I feel like we just had a... I want... You always bring up, like, Mike, you just have expectations when you go into a movie. I'm like, yeah, everyone does. No, no, I know. And then if the but... movie's good or bad, I walk out saying it's good or bad. My expectations, oh, it didn't meet them or it exceeded them. But I mean, it's easier to pick it's apart, swastika. obviously, because Half it didn't meet your expectations, is what I'm saying. Like, a lot of times you wish you, like, I wish it would have done this, I wish it would have done that. Because, like, of things you want to do, especially when you go to a comic book related movie where you know a lot of the story arcs, Dork. where you know, like, the characters more than you feel the situation <laughs> that film I, I can't. I, 
I feel like you're so wrong about this. I can't express how wrong I think you are about well, this. I'm wrong about Maybe we should opinion, open the floor to some other people. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> or you could just get good at editing. Oh, and edit oh okay. That what the point I was gonna just make? Edit that you guys one. Hey, did you hear that edit I did in the Fuck. baby convo? Did you even notice that edit? I don't think I did. Yeah. Well, you brought it at the end, though. Exactly. Now we're at the edit that. I did that to show oh, off. That's the point. Okay. I did that to did show this. off, man. <laughs> because I was like, that edit is fucking gold. You gotcha. can't even tell that we. I did forget I said that until you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're right. It totally worked. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Jordan. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there something about Fast and Furious? That's Okay, no, that, that was the point that I wanted to make. It's like, and I, then we talked about the Atlantic Rim, and then we just got, <laughs> we, we started talking about different things, and it got, oh yeah, Jordan, I'm sorry. I keep doing Shut that. the fuck up. The point I was trying to make is, I'm not really a fan of Fast and, and Furious. I've actually never seen a, uh, one of the movies yeah. in theater before, before that movie. Paul Blart either. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the fact is, I went and I enjoyed it. Because I, it was like I said, it's an escape. I'm not a fan of the movies, but I had an, I had a good time enjoying it. And I, I enjoyed it as well, but also I'm a fan of the movies. That's Dave, everybody. Also enjoyed. It. Yeah, I feel like if I go to a movie, I'm already investing something into it. So I, I generally, I don't my know. investment's twelve dollars. Yeah, I, like we talked yeah, about worst about movie experiences ever. Like those are the only times I felt like I didn't get like I went in there and just walked out like oh, Avengers oh. two worst movie experience ever. Um, that's not worst I can't. I, can't I mean, I don't even think it was bad, but I can't think of a worse one. Like I don't. Prince of Persia. Didn't see it. Didn't see that. The Matrix. I didn't see that in the theater. Did you not like the Matrix? No, I did. <laughs> I was gonna say like what? <laughs> there are very few movies. That How I do you feel about Ultron's two? Really, the worst movie going experience you've had? I I'm only saying that because like I was really bored and I can't think of another movie. Do, does money play into the your enjoyment no. of a movie? Like if it's like not as good as you wanted to, are you kind of mad that you no. spent ten bucks? Nope. Uh, not really. Only if I've ever bought a ticket for someone else to come with me to that movie, and then it ended up being the worst movie I've ever seen that year, then I then I'm then I'm mad about that. Because you double paid. Because I double paid, because you didn't want to go, and then I double paid to drag you along to a movie that I wish I didn't pay for, and I was like, I should have just said no. No one's going ever. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about Prince of Persia? Yeah. yeah. Which, you know what, has paid for itself in the stories. <laughs> <So>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could, the, the guy with no leg could say the same thing about the war. <laughs> How do you guys feel about going to the movies by yourself? No, I love it. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I love it a lot, can't actually. Why? I, I've seen oh, I've seen every Hobbit movie can't by myself. <laughs> yeah, who, who would you talk shit yeah, to? Yeah, I, I would I, just like walk out of the movie talking about something. I'm just, <laughs> I hate it. No, no I love. I hate I love, it too. I love going <laughs> to movies by myself. You validate my opinions. Except for if it's like a busy movie, then I'm really pissed off that I'm by myself. Yeah, you get that. Then you feel like you look weird. Yeah, I was just like, why is but this? If you go to a movie with like idiot? four or five people to like twenty. You know what movie I really weird felt weird going by myself to see? Moonrise Kingdom. I felt really awkward sitting by myself in Moonrise Kingdom. At least you didn't take a little kid to go see it. Yeah, that's that true. might have been a little more awkward. Yeah. What? <laughs> Dude. Because it's it, it's about like young child love, and I'm just like sitting in the theater by myself in like the front row. Well, there's a part yeah. of it that's about young child love. Yeah. Well, I'd say the overall movie is about just childhood. Childhood for sure. Yeah. I, I didn't see that movie. But it is oh, about really? love because they, that's good, that's the reason why yeah, they took the adventure like because it. they think that they love each other. Yeah. But I mean, like that's that's what I love about the movie is it takes such a childlike aspect of everything. It's like the the child's concept of love and the child's concept of uh, adventure and, and and danger and stuff like that is things like scissors and and BB guns and and kissing on the lips and stuff like that. Like that that's what the kid thinks of when he thinks of those kind of things. So that's what I appreciated about the movie is like the childlike aspects of it, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nowhere in it did you get like. An adult's perspective of what danger or what love is. It's it's all the child's. No, you did about between uh, Bill Murray's wife cheating on him with the police officer. Oh yeah, I saw part of it. I feel like that didn't was, like it. That was yeah, but that that, that kind of like showed like the grown up <laughs> aspect of you know, like along? falling yeah. out of love as these two good. kids are <laughs> falling in love, kind of. So I, I felt I, like that I was more of in, the uh, aspect of the things in the background that, that the children he, like, tend to overlook backwards. or not pay as much attention uh, to, kind of thing. Benjamin Button. Yeah, like I, got I guess, I guess oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, interpretable yeah, I mean, it's in many different ways. Yeah, yeah, that, pretty that's much. What makes when great. anybody yeah. gets struck, that's what by makes Wes Anderson can't make that not mm -hmm. funny. <laughs> that was probably going to be really weird to listen to because we were just having a conversation, <laughs> and you guys were having a conversation. So you guys should have done the whole time while this was happening. <laughs> yeah. We tried. Uh, yeah, you guys were too loud and <laughs> fucking annoying. No, fuck you, Kyle. Oh, you're so wrong. <laughs> you sound like my girlfriend. <laughs>
I feel bad about that now. <laughs> you should, I think fucker. You should. No, they, they no. Can take out that. I liked every Especially minute. I was like, hey, wait. I, no, I got to go. I got I just for that. You really thought he was going to get a chance. <laughs> and then you're like, specific room. And then we're like, ignore bad joke. Keep going. Did I, did I, I say specific room? You, did, you said specific I room, it. and then I said particular room all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. It was a particular room. And I said particular room. Mm, yeah, particular room job. Uh, oh, I got a new toilet. Oh, really? Pretty cool. <laughs> Is it a padded so, seat? No. Hmm. Wait, why the new toilet? Oh, were you having problems? No. You just wanted a new toilet? <laughs> yeah. Cool. What brand? No, no, the toilet was kind of broken, okay. so we had to get a new toilet. Okay. Is it, is it Moen? Is it Moen? Is it a Moen? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's a brand. Moen? It's a, I, I, poop I didn't even know they made toilets actually. Yeah, they do. No, they make faucets. I worked at Lowe's. Why would? Why would? Uh, I, mean, I thought you worked it's at Lowe's. It's actually. Ours. It's actually Both. a Walmart oh, yeah. brand. It's, right. it's called why a would, toilet. Oh, why would a bad, faucet man. brand yeah. not make? Still a made a porcelain. That's though. true. No, I've just never seen. Okay. Then again, it's actually a hard toilet. I've seen a brand name. I feel like that's. It's like a. It's like a. That shouldn't stay. A fork company not making a spoon. It's like it's right next to the window, so it's gonna. But they make a spork. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna yellow eventually, regardless. <laughs> whether it's we just yeah, whether it's whether it's or not. Yeah, we should just have two separate podcasts because this is just. Hey Kyle, let's try this. But we're going off what they're saying. I don't want to talk like, to Mike. It's like we're having a sidebar in the hey, middle Dave. of their conversation. It's getting very aggressive over there. So, <laughs> hey Dave, I just want you to know that I have very strong feelings about things, and I will yell at a moment's notice. Now you guys know Fuck how I felt. encourage yelling. Ah, those those times there's that been I, some passionate moments on the, up, the last yeah. podcast. I look back at those and I go, ah! oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was coming. I saw you like, you did that red. before you. <laughs> it's like, I was building up to it. I'm like, do it, do it. And, and part of me is like, don't, don't. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I'll be back. Hey, speaking <laughs> of toilets though. Yeah. Speaking you, of toilets. You take a dump. When I was standing up to wipe, yes, or last night, <sighs> I found blood in my... Oh, I thought you were going to just say you got a hammy. Up to wipe. That's what he said too. That's what I, that's I, what got, I told I got, him. Yeah, I got blood. Okay. You get it every once in a while. My first time. I get it a lot. You got a hemorrhoid. One time I thought, I, like, my shit was red. And I was like, oh, that's just blood in my stool. Like, I'm done. No, I'm done. Usually, Cheetos. flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, bad. If your shit's black, that's bad. Black? Yeah. That means you're bleeding, like, internally. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. Red means it's, like, it's on your butt. Which your could, butt. like, probably be it colon. Was super but red. It was, like, yeah. It was, like, fresh blood. So yeah, I, so I was, just, like, uh, I was, like, kind of. Feeling it with, with toilet paper. Oh, don't get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but like I was, because I was feeling like if it was something was sore and I just like opened a wound or something. I don't know. I couldn't tell. Yeah, so I was, I was kind of worried. But sometimes the toilet paper is rough and it will tear the skin. Yeah, it happens. I think there. And sometimes if you take really big dumps, that can do it too. Yeah, it does. It was a small dump though. It's probably hemorrhoid. Usually they're big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should or already you panicked if when cancer. you sit on the toilet and be. you go to push out poop and only blood comes out. Was your ass you sweaty? Was your ass sweaty throughout the day? What? Dude. I don't Actually, know why, but sometimes yeah. my butt gets really sweaty when I poop. Why is that? I have noticed. Why do you get sweaty butts when you poop sometimes? Do you know what the worst thing is? What? Splash back into your butthole after a turd drops in. That is the worst feeling ever. I kind of like it. Hate it. I hate it too, but I feel like there's worse feelings. Yeah, oh, no, definitely no, no, no. Because, <laughs> because you know when you sit down there's to take Holocaust, a dump. There's the Holocaust, there's slavery, and then there's the toilet water. Yeah, well, only one of those things is real. No, so. no. <laughs> No, because you go and sit down and take a dump, and you and you you piss into the toilet first before you know Jet the shit comes out. Oh, toilet. That's true. <laughs> no, so then you're like you're like my piss is going into my my Did butthole. I just missed a great joke. Uh, Jordan was talking. He said, "Yeah, it was it was a good one." Sorry, I'm just kidding. You'll get Sorry. it. On, you'll get it when you're yeah, you get it. Okay. Um, Forget it. <laughs> you guys got any phobias? Spiders. Arachnophobia. Oh my god, be as cliche as possible, Jordan. I'm sorry if I'm a human being and ocean I don't like phobia. fucking spiders. Yeah. What about the, the ocean? Yeah, ocean phobia. Heights sometimes. <laughs> when I'm falling from them. Yeah, yeah. If I'm just standing, spiders, that's fine. Spiders when they're poisonous. <laughs> Knives when they're being stabbed um, into me. I have These are the things I fear. I get anxiety in big crowds. Really? I do. Yeah. Do you yeah. stress sweat? I sweat, sweat all the time. Keep sweating. <laughs> I'm actually sweating a lot right I, now. I am fat. I fat guy sweat. You know what? Let's open this door. What about you, Kyle? Are you? What, what's worse, crowds? Kyle's afraid of death. Or alone in a box. Oh well, I've never been alone in a box, <laughs> but it sounds terrifying. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with that one. I don't like. I don't really like big crowds. Like I can tolerate it if I'm distracted, but if I'm like supposed to be like a part of it. 
Let's just say, let's just say we own a business together where, you know, we have to film events from time to time and he handles it way better than I do. Probably if I'm focused, like it's, it's totally different. Or if I'm like seeing a concert or something, it's not that bad to me. But if I'm like in my own head, I'm done. Like I have to step out. I have to, like it's, it gets bad. When we yeah, got the, yeah we got you the got pretty bad. local meeting yeah. the other day, which was not even a big crowd. But... No, and the, the, and one guy was talking to me for like twenty minutes, but like after and that, you're like, oh, I, gotta get I just had to get outside. Like, so what I'm hearing is the worst possible fear for this table would be stuck in a crowd of spiders. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. I feel like I'd be better off with spiders because I am allowed to kill them. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no legal. I'm not even gonna finish yeah, that. You can't even sentence. fucking talk, yeah, yeah. idiot. <laughs> You're right, Kyle. There is no way to live. <laughs> hey, Jordan, would you like to say anything? I feel like no one's let you talk. I was going to say, <laughs> spiders, continue. You ever seen the movie Arachnophobia with... Um... The fear of being raped by a man. You homophobe. <laughs> That's like a really fucked up fear. <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty specific. I think rape in general, I wouldn't want to be raped. No, I think, I think if a woman raped me, I think it'd be like, oh, no. Oh no! What are you doing? I think that I think that stops calling no. it rape when you start participating yeah. in it. The you, idea of rape is like unwanted. Well, sex. then I can't be raped by a woman then. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Unless she's absolutely your mom. ugly. Come on, man. <laughs> We're talking <laughs> fears way, here. Good scene, and it follows. Remember that shit? Yeah, absolutely. Claustrophobia. Oh, so you're the guy that doesn't like being alone? No, but I have actually, I think, I've overcome that. Over the past so few years. So next week, we're going to lock Jordan in a very small room. With a man that wants himself. to rape him. With a, a giant man, spider. That with wants a to giant rape man him. spider. Spider-Man is going to rape Jordan in a small <laughs> box. You can still be a part of the podcast if you can hear. <laughs> Give me headphones. <laughs> man in the box, get back in that box. <laughs> no, I, I think that I overcame my fear of claustrophobia in, in boot camp. When they, uh, yeah. when they put us in a room and filled it with smoke and they were like, all right, escape. And there was like this... <laughs> That's what boot camp is, man. That's what you guys... It turns out that wasn't boot camp. That was the girl started doing a prank. Where he's like, you know what we can fucking do to these kids? They're pissing me off. Let's put them all in a room with tear gas. No. <laughs> and his lieutenant's like... That's not the government. Just don't tell anyone. No, they didn't. They wouldn't. No, it was it was one of our last tests. It was like, try to, uh, like, try to find a way out of, like, a ship that's on fire. Mm-hmm. And oh. they put us in this room that we were... Ocean. And we were, like, taking... Uh, of course. We were taking inventory of like stuff in this room and all of a sudden they were like smoke started coming in the room they're like all right what do you do and we we're like <laughs> we kept taking inventory it's like <laughs> and then like we like felt the door and we're like there's a fire on the other side of that door she's like gotta find a way out of this room so there was like this little crawl space in the ceiling that we had to like crawl through and we got up there it was pitch black and it was like probably like and then you got raped the, by a man I fit? no so well no i so think I barely Barely fit. Yeah. You but they wouldn't take. You would have been the last one to get through people. because they then they could leave oh, you behind do. and you wouldn't yeah. block the exit. Oh yeah. It's That's like true. you know they're like fat guys go last. That makes sense. We always go last. <laughs> I'll take Jeffrey, yeah. Jordan, and uh, Kyle. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that crawling through what a small space. <laughs> oh yeah. That's oh, something phobias. that terrifies me because th- I remember hearing as a what kid is it? Yeah, what, Egyptian did torture. Did you say your phobias? No, I'm gonna get into it now. There was an Egyptian torture technique. Where they would have these, like... Oh, nanobots. That's your... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Where they would have these, like, tunnels. And the tunnels just get narrower and narrower as they go on. And they're all slanted downward, so there's no real way of going back. And what they do is they just shove you face first into one of those tunnels and push you about six feet in. Damn. So you can only go forward since it's downward. You're just constantly slowly sliding downward and it just gets narrower and narrower and narrower. And it probably has to smell terrible because at the very bottom of that pit is There's the dead shit. bodies they put in shit. there before. So you're just slowly sinking down face first into this pit of darkness that smells like death. I think that's what I'm afraid of. That did, is did the aliens invent that too? Probably. Help them with that one. Mm. That's your phobia? Yeah. Jet fuel can't melt phobias. <laughs> He doesn't get it. <laughs> you weren't there. Yeah. No, but uh, what else am I afraid of? Death. I'm afraid of death, big time. Big time. You know what? Death. You're right. That's my number one. Keeps me awake at night. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Serious. Yeah. yeah. Just I start thinking about it like right before bed, and then I'm like, fuck. It's like maybe dying itself. I'm not as afraid of, but the concept of like, because even when I'm all alone, like if I was even in a box with no one else, 
trapped in a box <laughs> and or a sense sensory deprivation chamber or something like that where i can't feel anything i would see lose anything, my mind anything. in one of those i probably Amen. would too but here's the thing i can still think to myself i can still say here i am with nothing around me boy this sure does suck or if I'm like being tortured, I can be like, "Wow, here I am being tortured, boy." The tortured, tortured, tortured. Here I am being tortured. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> so you're not gonna focus on the neg negative aspects. <laughs> but with death, I'm w I am without anything. It's like the idea of like, well, at least you're not being tortured anymore. Yeah, I wish I could appreciate that. Yeah, but, I'm but you fucking wouldn't. Dead. But yeah. you wouldn't know you know nothing. We've exactly. Talked about this on I don't want to not know nothing. I don't want even. Yeah, the idea. I, that's that why I want to be in a fucking there. head in a jar. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, We've already talked about this. We downloaded on the internet. I'd rather be dead. Move on. Yeah, that, that, that to me is the terrifying day. concept of being that's without true. the one person I've always been with my entire life, me. Because that's, that's who's always there with me, no matter what. So you're your favorite person. Well, no, I think I'm the I think I'm the center of my own universe because yeah. when I die, then the sun goes away and the moon goes away and everyone I love I goes wish away the too. Fucking sun to me, away. at least. Toitcha. Toitcha's the worst. Toitcha. I wish the fucking sun would go away. It's too hot, dude. It's too hot. Rewind it. It was like 80 fucking degrees today. That's a good idea. If you could erase history, would you? Like, what just start from zero. When did I say that? You said rewind it, and I thought oh, okay. I thought about rewinding all history. Like, what if we just all started with a clean slate right now? It's like, how much baggage do we carry? Like, how many rivalries and hatreds are still talked about because of things that happened generations ago by people that aren't even alive today? I feel like it would just happen again, though. Yeah, yeah. someone would do happening. something fucked up to someone else and they'd be like, oh, well now you got an enemy, my it, friend. It might be slightly different. But well, yeah, just... but then that's a legitimate enemy to have because that guy did something fucked up. It's another thing to hate someone just because of what their great-great-grandfather so did. So then if this story is just going to repeat the cycle all over again. It would just happen again. Like, so what if we existed in this world that we just erased? Like, we know what we, you know, we know the, our history. But then, like, we have to explain, like, like, there's this tyrant coming up and we're like, he's like Hitler. Like, hey, you don't uh, understand. But then they're like, well, who's Hitler? This is the plot of yeah. Hot Tub Time Machine. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. was that what you're trying to do? No. Okay. I was literally thinking about erasing history because it might not mean something to us too much because we live in America, which is like the size of ten different countries combined in some parts of the world. So it's like you know we, uh, it's like our rivalries are, are honestly kind of small and like you know yeah. and, and stuff like that. But there are some like countries dick. in Europe and stuff like that where they legitimately hate the people. Less than like twenty miles away from them yeah, because of what their great great grandfather did to their great great grandfather, and I feel like a lot of that baggage could just be discarded with with no harmful ramifications. But then you're right; we would forget about other major and important things, and maybe we wouldn't have appreciation for some of the good things we have. Yeah, and we also wouldn't know something who the different. Fuck the Greeks were. We wouldn't know who the fuck the Romans were. Yeah, some of that wouldn't be too bad. But could you imagine like reestablishing those philosophies? Like, well, no, a lot of the a lot of the core ideas and, and stuff like that, like language, would still be here and things like that. Okay. But I'm just talking about the the interpolitical history and stuff like that of like people dealing with other people. Yeah, okay. all of that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. You guys, I'm really tired about talking about history. Let's talk about her, her story. story. Jesus Christ. Really, really. Why well, you have to be bigenderal? You know, really, there are more than two genders, Kyle. I know, there's like nine. True that. We actually have a gender neutral bathroom here on campus. What? Do you? Yeah, in the JCS. Does it just have a bucket in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a trough of just like, eh, we'll do whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they'll bring in here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, let's put, in a, put in a bucket and a mop and they can figure it out. <laughs> It is probably literally one bathroom meant to be used by one person with a toilet and a stall and a urinal. It's probably just a bathroom. Yeah. Exactly. Like a that's what I'm saying. It's just like a basic... It's probably more of a men's bathroom than it would be a woman's bathroom because I'm sure there's a urinal too. Or yeah, something. but why would they... If it, you just said it, it's probably a bathroom for one person. I mean, I guess... No, it might be the size. Are there more bathroom. than one gender... Multi-gendered person? There, there, there are people be... who identify themselves as multiple or different genders than yeah. just the... Then, then just the two there sexes. Could be a, there could be a biological. female who, you know, well, oh, sorry, sorry. I don't know how to see it. It's such a fucking weird well, thing. Well, it's because, about. like, yeah. there's, there's the biological sexes that we all have based yeah. on our chromosomes. But it's like, you know, due to things like attraction and identity and things like that, you end up with tons of different concepts yeah. of how people want to identify themselves. When everyone's born, they're going to have an X or a Y chromosome. Yes. End of story. Or if you're a hermaphrodite. 
Yeah, but even but then, even that, you're going to have yeah. some sort of chromosomal structure that can be scientifically established saying this is what you are. Yeah, but, but there are people that will sorry, go sorry, ahead. that will identify themselves differently than what they've been assigned, or exactly. based on that um, assignment, will spread out from that and say, well, yeah, I'm a, I am X Y, but I also find attraction to this kind of thing and this kind of thing. I don't know if it's sexual attraction though that that's like you know what I mean. I think, I it's think like, that plays a part in it. It probably you know what it probably does, but basically it's like. You know, you can have a physical female who is a boy. Do you know what I mean? Or you can have a physical boy who is a female. And I'm talking from the subject of themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Some people feel like they're honestly born in the wrong bodies. But so, I mean, like, you could have a penis, meaning you're a male, but you could totally believe you're a female. And so, like, that's what for. So, it's like those. I, I guess so. There so, yeah. really is multiple sexes going into that. It's like, like, what? Like, they're just, yeah, just have more estrogen in them. Than well, no, like there was just this t- testosterone. It, 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 that might be a factor when it starts, like you know, because hormones do have an effect on your brain and and your conception of things and how you, you probably perceive yourself. Yeah, but it's like there's obviously more to it because the brain is such a complex and weird thing. Mm-hmm. It's it's hard to establish it into just two identities. Huh? Yeah. So I, I should say like two general identities. There was just a special on TV like two weeks ago with this four year old who is physically a girl. But since she could talk, has believed himself to be a boy. And since, like, a super young age. And it it kept going. Like, the parents just thought it was a phase, and it wasn't. And, like, I think the kid's, like, eight or nine now. And they literally, like, when he was six or seven, took him out of school and put him in another school just so he could start over anew as a boy with a boy's name and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, from that age. And I I just want to get the statistic out real quick. There was a statistic. I'm sorry. There was a a stat in this. (laughs) Statistic. (laughs) In this story. Where it was like 47, 47% of the people that have these transgender, you know, go through this transgender transition. Transgender. Whatever, oh my God, Kyle, just finish it. Attempt it. suicide. Really? Yeah. Because we don't know what the fuck it's like to be like feeling that we're in the wrong body. You know what I mean? That we're looked at as a boy, but like, say I feel like I'm a woman. <laughs> oh, wait. <Don't>, that's <laughs> a stretch. God damn it. You know what I mean, though? Like, I, I think I'm in the wrong body. Who knows what that feels like? To, feel, to feel, be in society and feel so... I mean, it goes back to anything, really. really wish that I was in Robert Downey Jr.'s body. Not feeling like you're a human, a slave. <laughs> to, be a, to be that guy just to for be one... John Malkovich. For one day. No, but, uh, like... So when this kid grows up, it's going to be a man, but he'll have female parts. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're not talking about doing any kind of, like, you know... Surgery? Yeah, surgery. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Surgery or hormones. They're not talking about any of that right? because he's too young. Mm-hmm. But, like, eventually that might be a choice he wants to make. You know what I mean? Or he needs mm-hmm. to make. But so. then some people want the want the body of one way while they perceive themselves the other way. That's interesting. There's, there's Like I said, there's tons no, yeah. of different levels to this. And I think something important to, to get out there is, like, a lot of people might hear this and be like, oh, my gosh, here's these people wanting to be special little snowflakes where it's like, oh, I'm this person trapped in this body and stuff like that. It's like, you know what? I wouldn't doubt it if there are people out there that do this kind of thing for attention because there are people out there that do terrible fucking things, like like um, say they, they're planning to commit suicide just to get attention, even though they actually have no real concept or no real feelings that are suicidal. Yeah. And so it's kind of, it, it's like, you know, those people are the people that should be ashamed of themselves. But we shouldn't be, like, you know, casting damnation on all the other people that feel this way just because of those few assholes that are doing it just to try and stand out from the crowd. Oh, yeah. But it's and, hard, but then at, at, at some point you kind of find it hard to differentiate because you don't know, you don't know someone's true motives. Yeah, and, and then the other thing is also trying to be PC and be safe, which I think no one should do. If someone calls you by the improper pronoun they are making their own decisions based on how they perceive you and stuff like that just well, like you make your own on how you perceive yourself well yeah that there was there was uh this guy in my acting class who looked very feminine so when i first talked to him i was i instead of using he or she because i didn't know particularly because you could tell mm-hmm. he was mm-hmm. more effeminate and i was like hey how you doing i wasn't like hey man how you doing or yeah Hey, how you doing, lady? You know, I was just like, I was just like, hey, how you doing? I pretty much call everyone dog. What's up, so, dog? That's the, yeah. the good, and that's I a good way to go. Is, and I that's think a, dude is gender neutral also. Yeah. I'm just going to put that out there. Dude yeah. is definitely gender neutral. There doesn't have to be a dudette. No, you're true. Dude's very true. Yeah. But man might be offensive. You got to watch shit like that. Yeah, no, I've but, done that before but then I... But no, then, see, you don't have to watch shit like that. Well, if, some, if someone comes out and says, I'd rather you not call me that, hey, 
then don't yeah. call them that. Yeah, but agree. they shouldn't immediately start saying, hey, you have to be careful what you say. You like, shouldn't feel bad about it, but you could also make an effort to do the right thing. You can if you want to. But I feel like... How would you go about doing that, though? Like, walking exactly. to someone, like, right near them, like, should I call you boy or should I call you girl? You see, at, that yeah. point, that, at that point, it feels like you're kind of coming on too strong. Like, you're like... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, pe people already have to deal with enough socially awkward situations. <laughs> yeah. They don't... They, we shouldn't have to add asking the person what their proper pronoun would be. Yeah. I really want to put Michael Sarah in this circumstance and just see how he comes out. Or, or, or Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. What's the deal with all these pronouns? What's the deal with all these different genders nowadays? Uh, two awful Jerry Seinfeld impressions. The I other mean, back back. The other idea on. I want to throw out there. Seinfeld will be in town on the 15th. People can call, people can call themselves whatever they want. A lot, a lot of people will say like, oh, well, come on. They're, they were born XX chromosome. They're a girl. Oh, yeah. Just, just deal be with whatever. being a girl. It's like, listen... If a person wants to call themselves a Republican, are you going to be like, please, you believe in this, you believe in this, there's no way you're a Republican. I'm Captain or, America. Or if someone calls themselves Catholic and you're like, please, you never go to church, you, you, you eat meat on Fridays, this and this and this. It's like, I'm skinny. If someone wants to call themselves <laughs> something, they can call themselves I'm that. And you, and you just have to learn to fucking deal with it. But then in the reverse side, that person has to deal with everyone else not respecting their decision. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword where if you get to call yourself whatever you want, you can't be petty when people don't do that. See, that doesn't make sense. So I can't walk naked in public? Shh. Kyle was just arrested. <laughs> He's going to jail. <laughs> I'm sweating. Bad boys, bad boys. What, what you gonna, gonna do? do? What you gonna you just, do? You guys can just sing. You bad boys, bad boys. 